Hello everyone, this is Akira, this is Megumi, and uh, well, welcome to our um, special Noodle event like class that we're going to have uh, today, uh, our HQ uh, in Kagawa, Japan. And uh, so we are talking about um, chomen or like lomen, that's like, or Chinese noodle. Like these are two major uh, types of Chinese noodles out there like in the world, like, you know, two most uh, popular ones um, in the world. And then um, we are doing this because um, we get asked a lot of questions about like, okay, so, you know, we have like Richmond machines, right? I mean, these machines are designed to make, well, um, variety of ramen noodles, right? Ramen noodles, which are very similar to like Chinese noodles, right? but like, you know, well, a lot of people like ask us, okay, you know, these machines, can they make like, you know, this type of Chinese noodles, like this type of pasta, right? So we just we wanted like, um, we'll answer these questions about actually doing this in class. So that's what we're doing. So, well, um, the particular machine we want to use today is like Richmond Gold One machine. That's the latest, uh, only one noodle machines that we have, right? And then, so we just wanted to kind of like share with you, like, okay, how we can um, craft, right? Um, you know, this, well, the most popular Chinese noodles like chow mein, right? Or lo mein, um, that, that basically stuff, right? Noodles. And uh, so that's what we're showing, that's what we're talking about today. So um, by the end of the class, like we're going to show you um, how, um, you know, this particular type of chow mein we're making is made on Richmond Gold One from scratch. So uh, please stay tuned till the end of class. And then, uh, so we want to go over this whiteboard first to um, kind of just talk about, you know, for those of you who don't know what chow mein is, um, lo mein noodles is, or, right? Or, um, so just want to talk about, what these are and then but like chow mein, lo mein noodles are like basically two major uh, Chinese noodles you know a lots and lots of people like are you know trying them out like you know every single day right uh, across the world and then uh, chow mein means just basically fried noodles like chow means fried then lo mein means like basically tossed noodles like lo means tossed right and um, so these are like, so chow mein, um, basically like fried noodles, like basically there are two um, major types of um, chow mein noodles. So the one of them is like, so we take the noodles and then we flash fry noodles, right? And then we put them in a stir fry with uh, like veggies and meat, right? In a sauce. And then, so basically that's that. Like the so noodles are very crispy with, um, you know, stir fried, and then veggies and meat, or like all meat, and then in the sauce, right? So these are just very cr crispy noodles, um, stir fry uh, noodle dish. But then the second one will be like, um, so we take the noodles, right? And then, you know, in the pan, um, we're going to kind of press the noodles into like, you know, flat, and then kind of sh make it into like kind of, sh kind of pancake shape, like um, the noodles, like this chunk of noodles. And then we'll top that with um, like stir fry, veggie, or meat in a sauce, right? So, so this this is basic. These are two basic types of chow mein noodles. These are very crispy, but like kind of greasy because like we have to use oil to you know prevent the noodles from sticking, right? Um, then lo mein, on the other hand, is like well, it's well the the noodles. Uh, parboil or fully cooked, like you know, by like cooking them in the water, and then we toss them uh, in a stir frying um, veggie or you know meat in a sauce, right? So lo mein actually kind of very similar to um, kind of Japanese version of stir fry noodle, uh, yakisoba noodles, which um, we're going to be doing like on this Friday. Uh, we just wanted to like show you guys, you know, the difference between uh, Japanese version of stir fry noodles and then. Chinese version of stuff like noodles, right? And then, you know, how we can craft them um, on the, or, you know, noodle machines, right? So on Friday, like we're doing that. And then for those of you who are interested in uh, watching it, uh, please, you know, sign up for the class. So how can we um, craft chow mein or raw mein noodle, right? Um, so basically we have uh, different variables that we have control, right? When crafting our chow mein noodles, and then I think the big one is well noodle size, right? Noodle size, and then when it comes to uh, noodle size, chow mein noodles, um, you know, it's, it's it varies like dramatically from like thin to thick, right? And then like the thinness would be like uh, almost like 
well, down the past like Indial hair thing, right? It's eight point that zero point eight millimeter, and to almost like you know it, it's even bigger than Sanuki Udo, like six point three millimeter, like quarter of an inch. And when talking about noodle size, right? Uh, like thinner, thicker, and then you know, well, thinner probably softer, or like you know, more fragile because it's thin, thin, right? It's like when you bite into them, like it just you know, it just breaks off like really easily, right? But like if you have like thin, thick noodles, like, you know, six millimeter, quarter of an inch thick noodles, um, that'd be like really tough, right? You have to have like, you know, um, you have to like bite it like really hard to like or break it off, right? And then, you know, also shape. Uh, when it comes to chomen or lomen, uh, a lot of them are like, Actually, round shaped, round shaped. So we pick the round shape. Like, of course, like we, you could do like square shape as well, and then make them flat. Or you know, but uh, well, for this one, because uh, the majority of the chomen seem chomen noodles seem to be um, round in shape. Like we will do round this time. And then so the protein, another variable we can well change if we like. Or protein content of flour we use to make chomin noodles. And so protein, basically the harder protein co higher the protein content, the harder the noodle texture. So um, for chomin noodles, we would do um, from like 7%, uh, which would be like kind of lower end of like, you know, wheat flour used for, for example, like udon noodles, like which are soft and chewy noodles, right? And then to 11%, um, so probably lower end of uh, probably for like ramen noodles, right? Like which makes it harder. So seven and eleven percent like softer and harder. That's kind of well uh, range that you you could use, right, to make your you know chomen noodles. And then hydration, right? So how much water are you adding to the flour to make your chomen noodles? So we'll we'll do like not too dry. So this is the higher the hydration, the softer the noodle texture. And then you know lower harder right, and then but we don't want to go like really dry, um, you know, considering like you know we're gonna fry them, and then um, but like we don't want to go like too high, or not too wet, um, probably like stop at like 38 percent, but maybe softer right, um, and then um, eggs right, basically it's it's Chinese or well, they're Chinese egg noodles so like they contain um, a lot of eggs, right? But like, um, but eggs like, well, when we use the whole eggs, right? Usually it's whole eggs, right? To make Chinese noodles, but the whole eggs like give you like, give them um, kind of texture, like kind of springy texture at the same time, like you give, you give them, they give them um, like, well, eggy flavors. And they like the color, right? Kind of yellowish color. Um, and then some, Chinese noodles, egg noodles call for, uh, you know, the whole, well, it's like kind of replacing the whole like hydration with, you know, eggs, right? Uh, so, so basically what, we, what they're doing is like, you know, using the fresh eggs, right? And then, you know, with no water at all. Uh, so that's, that's the kind of authentic, like kind of Chinese egg noodles. But uh, this time around, like we are just doing the um, whole egg powder and then uh, just adding sort of like eggy flavor to the noodles. And then for the noodle size, so noodle size, pretty much like when you are um, crafting your chow mein noodles, like, so noodle size like is a first option, like first one like you put, probably pick, right? And then sort of like uh, protein, kind of flour, uh, hydration, kind of like decide them, them, you know, kind of that size, like decide them, uh, decide these like variables. Um, so, so what we're doing like today is like 2.0 um, round shape, right? So, you know, it's a, it's a kind of medium kind of size, like not too thick, not too thin. And then, but like in the protein content, like we are using like, well, probably 8%, like 8.5%, um, kind of like um, udon flour, kind of soft, like chewy, right? And then for hydration, we're well, doing so it's like kind of softer side for the protein, right? And then for uh, hydration, like we're doing like 33%, um, kind of kind of in the middle. Um, so 
like for the hydration, like we want to be like kind of, well, kind of a little bit on the hard side, right? And then for the protein, like a little bit on the softer side. And then for the noodle side, like kind of in the middle or like you know, just a probably smaller, like thinner side, right? So, well, this kind of noodle may be suitable for like probably, you know, fry flat, uh, this type of um, chow mein. Uh, you know, we, we're gonna like, well, um, kind of fry them into like kind of a pancake shape, like kind of chunk of noodles, right? And then, so if you have like, you know, if you use the thick noodles, that may give us like really um, hard, tough, uh, you know, chunk of noodles, right? So um, that's why we kind of pick that kind of noodle side and then like kind of pull out protein and then hydration kind of beside them themselves, like according to that uh, noodle size. But so we wanted to just kind of compensate, well, but if you're doing like thick noodles, like, you know, quarter of the inch noodles, right? And then you want to compensate, you know, that kind of hardness with that kind of protein, soft protein, and then, you know, high hydration, which makes it softer to kind of balance out the hardness, like toughness of that um, thick texture. So, so that's a kind of, well, that, I hope like that kind of gives you like idea of like how you can craft your chow mein noodles like lo mein noodles. So yeah, so let's start uh, making our own version of chow mein noodles on our rich main gold one machine. Yeah, so Richmond Gold One machine, so it's an all in one motion little machine, right? And uh, so it has a 10 kilo mixer, 10 kilogram mixer. And uh, so that means that like you can mix up to like 10 kilograms of solid ingredients. And um, on top of it, you're adding uh, liquid. And uh, solid ingredients we have is like, so the flour, right? So this is udon flour, and uh, we add egg, a uh, whole egg powder, whole egg powder, right? So the minimum batch of this mixture is like uh, four kilograms, right? So like we added like just four kilograms of solid ingredients, right? And then um, because we have a uh, whole egg powder in it, um, you know, we want to mix it just with the solid ingredients first. And then, um, so we have salt, right? So we're adding salt, right? We're adding salt to the water. And then, so basically salt uh, adds a kind of salty taste to the noodles. Yeah, but if you're adding like a lot more, um, that's gonna have like different effects. But like, yeah, basically for this one, we're just adding the salty taste to the noodles. Um, just one percent to the weight of flour, right? So in this case, um, it's four four thousand grams, right? So that's forty grams of salt in it, and then the total hydration is forty uh, thirty three percent. Yeah. So notice that there, like there's no um, kansui. Right, Kansi is like uh, potassium carbonate, sodium carbonate. Um, that's uh, required for ramen noodles to have, right? But like, well, um, certain types of Chinese noodles call for a Kansi too. But like, chow mein, you know, it's well, some of, sometimes chow mein like do not boil noodles, right? So like, you know, we do not put any Kansi in it in them to. Um, because like by cooking them, you know, we are releasing the, um, you know, kansi, which like, you know, we, we don't need like when we eat them, right? Uh, so, you know, we don't put any kansi in them. Um, then, uh, so chow is one of the Chinese, well, Chinese noodles like do not require any kansi. Uh, well, at least like the type that we are looking at, right? And then uh, making, right? And then, um, we have, yeah, it's like, no, like, maybe we have to prepare, right, um, the dough in advance, right, to, you know, so that, like, you know, we won't waste any time, like, watching the mixer, 
making the dough for the chomin noodles. So, so you, so you notice the color, right? At least the color comes from the um, the whole egg powders we added. So it's kind of light yellow. And because it's just 33% hydration, like the dough is like kind of dry, but you know, the, the, ch the size of the crumbles, you know, it's like really, really small. So after mixing, right, um, so we take the dough out and then um, sometimes we want to uh, rest it, right, after mixing our room temperature for like 30 minutes, one hour, and then this dough has been like rested for an hour or so. Then, um, so we start it and then like, um, you're feeding the dough into the roller, right? And then uh, kind of winding onto the rolling pin. And so what's great about like Richmond Gold One is that like it has this automatic, automatic dough feeder um, you know, it has like conveyor that carries the dough into the roller, right? And then, um, so the machine is watching, checking to see like how much dough is like going into the roller, right? And then, so, so that, you know, you don't have to, so like watch it, see if like, if like proper amount of dough is like being fed into the roller. And, uh, well, usually like on a conventional machine, like this is done by hand, right? And then, you know. If you're not experienced, like you may make some mistake and then like kind of spring up this process, but uh, the machine is uh, you know, equipped with sensors to check the amount of dough like being fed, right? So, you know, you don't have to worry about it. Like you just place the dough, right? On the conveyor belt and then, you know, the machine does the rest of the process for you. So we call this process like rough forming basically uh, we're making a uh, dough sheet uh, that's still kind of fragile rough but you know just wanted to make it into like sheet of dough then uh, we're moving on to the next process so what we're doing now we're doing now is that like we are going to um, separate this dough sheet, right? Sheet of dough into like two, right? Two separate sheets, right? And then, yeah, put them put them together through the set of rollers. Yeah, so adjusting the roll gap to, well, two millimeter, right? Then, um, so feeding this dough, like these two separate sheets dough into the roll again, and then, you know, they're putting, they're like getting put together, right, through a roller, and then, um, so this way, like, you're kind of like working the dough, um, you're kind of strengthening the um, gluten um, structures inside dough, right? Then, so basically the dough that's coming out is um, firmer, you know, um, stronger in terms of gluten structure. So we just Just making sure that like the dough, like length of the dough is like even, right? So that, you know, while well, just doubling, uh, layering, the, layering the dough to exactly the same length, like to lay the dough, like going to the rollers to get, you know, 
put together, right? So combined. Then, um, so the next one, um, next process be like, well, the same process, like, you know, well, the second time, like, second time, like, combining. But uh, from this point on, like, usually do, like, twice, uh, once or twice, like, this combining process. But uh, for the second, like, we're not, you know, we don't do, like, uh, more than twice, right, this process. So for the second time, um, we start doing, like, well, dusting, like automatic duster, like dust uh, um, conveyor belt, which um, coats the dough as like outer side of the dough with the dusting powder, and that helps the dough from sticking together, right? So the outer side of the dough, right, it gets it's getting like dusted, and then um, you know that definitely helps, um, yeah, dough from sticking together. Okay, so after after combining the dough like for a second time, like we'll just thin the dough, right? We'll just thin the dough to the final thickness. So just in the roll gap, and then going for um, another thinning process, but. Uh, this time around, we just thin it, and then and then uh, this more like we are going to speed speed it up. Yeah, so what's great about this machine is that like, well, um, we automate uh, a lot of processes that are like, well, not usually done by manually, done manually um, on conventional machines. So, you know, like once you know like how the machine works, then like, you know, you know, you don't have like, you don't have to have like any skills, like, you know, any previous experiences like in noodle making, but like you can just like get it. And then, um, yeah, so, what maybe is doing like is just kind of checking the actual thickness of dough and then like that's 2.4 ish. Yeah, 2.4, 2.4. And so after it's gone through um, 2.0 millimeter roll gap, so this dough, um, you know, expanded by 0 0.4 after it's gone through like 2.0 millimeter, right? So we know that, like, okay, well, what, what is the roll gap like we need to set to get to the final thickness, right? So we know, like, okay, you know, how much it expands back, right? So um, 0 0.4, so we set to this roll gap, like, we know the final thickness, or what the final thickness is going to be. So this is the cutter we use, right? It's like round number 16, round shape number 16. Number 16 is really, like, um, Kind of like 2.0, like 8, 8 point, 1.875 or something. Like it's very close to like 2.0 millimeter, right? 
and then um, so considering the um, the the dough bounces back by 0 0.4 millimeter, um, you know if we set the roller gap to uh, 1.3, right, 1.3, um, then you know we should get a final thickness being uh, 1.7, you know, plus 0 0.4, right? So yeah, that's what we set. That's the roller gap we set, and then so we're gonna. We're cutting these chowmen noodles. noodles are coming out. So basically you can um, just one by one, right? And one portion by one portion, then um, the noodles are slit right through this cutter and then um, gets portioned by another cutter. Then uh, so so basically you can set the length right where where the noodles cut and then um, so that determines the the portion size serving size. So it's very easy. Um, then the you know, it's very like easy on the workers like body as well like you know well because that height of like where like you, you can catch the noodles like it's kind of relatively high so you know you have to kind of well keep in like posture like in the awkward position well you know, some conventional animal uh, machines like um kind of force you to like kind of you know well we treat like noodles like in the awkward position like kind of well Harding the walkers back, but um, doesn't happen in this machine. Okay, so we have a, like round shape um, chowmein noodles, right? So yeah, we can we can flash fry them, uh, or like we can fry them flat on the pan, and then you know. Um, Top with the uh, um, stuff white, uh, veggie like meat or like you know uh, the sauce, and uh, yeah, we got chowmein noodles, chowmein noodle dish. So yeah, stuff fried noodles like is great for like you know takeaways and then like for the casual um, you know fast food like uh, you know dish like room items right. So um, I think and then you know in Japan like we have. Um, you have quite a few um, specialty uh, stuff by noodle shops, right? Um, you know, yakisoba noodle shops. And these uh, shops are great for a um, lot of reasons, they're very popular. And then, you know, but this popularity like kind of just proves that like with this type of like specialty noodle shop, like can, um, you know, stand as a business, like a profitable business. So um, it's one of the, Probably um, type of like touch noodles that we recommend. Uh, you know, you do as a business. And uh, so it's coming on Friday. Uh, we are doing the Japanese version of it. Japanese version of stuffed right noodles like yakisoba. And then so again, like we are doing like a, our own version of it. And then see you know if we can uh, you know come up with something unique, right? Some unique like yakisoba noodles that you know you guys can you know implement like for your in your like noodle business right so that like well uh, you can grow your business and then um, probably you know start serving like some unique um, menus from your um, at your restaurant like in your business so um, you know we hope that like it's going to help you uh, you know grow your business even further so uh, we don't have the pay setup yet but uh, um, please 
um, you know, uh, come back to yamatanoodle.com like for tomorrow, and then you know we should have the page set up like for you to sign up uh, for you know, Friday's uh, class. And then even you, if you miss this class, right, um, you know, well, we'll send you a link uh, that you can access to the recording of the class, right? So you can watch it later, uh, you know, not live, but uh, yeah, the recording. So please sign up and then, you know, we hope to see you back in the next class. So thank you so much for watching. And then we'll, uh, thank you, so stay tuned. Um, thank you. And then if you have uh, certain topics you're interested in learning, like, you know, what um, wanting us to do, uh, please, send us email uh, or leave them comments. Uh, we'll really appreciate it and uh, we'll definitely you know, make it into class. So yeah, so thanks so much for watching. And if you haven't already, like please subscribe to the channel and uh, we hope to see you back in the next class. So thank you so much, bye-bye.